Welcome back to Sunless Sea. I have just delivered the two live specimens to the Chapel of Lights, which advanced the Sigil Ridden Navigator's quest, and now I need to take them to Frostbound. So, we'll do that in a bit, but definitely not in this episode, since I still have plans. Still gonna go over to Aram, down to Polythreme, then down to the Empire of Hands, gonna do all that, so next stop is Aram. But before doing that, I did notice that there might be something new here. There might be something new to say to him ever since I advanced his quest. Because I don't remember this right here. He stands at the rail, staring into the dark. He flinches when you join him. His sigil has been troubling him of late. I'm sorry, my lord. I was remembering the Chapel of Lights and the priest's council. Frostfound, he said. You've been so kind. I hate to ask you for more, but... His sigil dims. It coils like a poised serpent. Oh. Strange, his sigil changes color based on his mood, I guess? So that was new, but it didn't actually tell me anything new. It's just kind of a reminder that I need to take him to Frostbound. Okay, well, let's head over to Aram. Yeah, so the Watchful Curio from Aram will be for gaining audience with the King at Polythreme. And the Strange Catches will be for both the Cook as well as, actually, I believe I can talk with the Nacreous Outcast using a Strange Catch. I don't think I need to talk to him. I don't know if it's actually going to do anything, but I'm going to try it. Because he's involved with the, whole, with the whole Port Cecil thing, and I feel like that quest probably can't be advanced until I deliver all the stuff that they need at Port Cecil. I don't even remember what that stuff is. I know they needed a strange eolith, which I have. I don't think I delivered one. I think they needed a hunting trophy, but I might have already delivered that. I don't really remember. But anyway. Poor report. Okay. So... I don't know how many strange catches he's going to want. Oh sweet, look at that! I can get 50 fuel for one captivating treasure! I'm totally gonna do that! Hell no. It's a terrible deal. That is really, that is a really, really bad deal. Aram is just filled with horrible deals. 50 fuel. The price for fuel in London is 10. 10 times 50 is 500. Echo. This is the... This is basically turning your captivating treasure into half its worth. Freaking terrible. Anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure how many strange catches to get. I'm gonna get two, because I know I can give one to the cook, as well as one to the Nacreous Outcast. So, let's do that and see. Let's talk with the Nacreous Outcast first. Invite it to dine with me. Now let's see what happened. Oh, wow, I gained a secret. And a tale of terror and a Z story. Alright, is this anything new? Um... I think this is new. Yeah, this is new. Okay. An untidy dinner. Where did it learn to cook? Not in its amber-smeared home tunnels, because it obviously prefers its food raw. Between gulps and flabbers, it attempts to chat. It's hard to decipher its words. Its mouth is full of fish flesh. Its mind is alien. And besides, it's terribly shy. Consequently, the evening is not a great success. But you learn a little of its past. It was abandoned in Port Cecil for rubbery crimes. <laughs> crimes whose nature quite slip the surly bonds of language. The principals found it an apt tool and has been its patron ever since. It begins to say... I used to love, and then suddenly excuses itself. Aw, oh, what did you used to love? Also, I, I can't believe it was seriously abandoned there for rubbery crimes. <laughs> rubbery crimes? <laughs> That's awesome. Alright, well, I, I can proposition it, so maybe I can be what it used to love or something. Of course, I'm not going to do that. I'm really curious what that would do, though. Alright, that seems to be it. Uh, 
Okay. Time for the cook. Yeah, so this is what it says. It's a matter of luck. You will need at least two useful ingredients. I don't really know what that means. Does he keep a running count of how many strange catches I've given him? I don't know. Disappointment. Alas, too ordinary. The, f the flesh goes into his shipboard Athener stove, an edifice of his own invention that combines the functions of roasting and refinement. Steam rises. The crew licks their lips. Uh, it's too ordinary for him, but uh, it's something that the crew are, are actually willing to eat because it won't poison them to death, unlike the last sample. Lost 20 hunger, too. Nice. So I can just keep giving him more, right? Yeah, okay. I, I don't... I really don't know how many to buy. <laughs> Lost 20 hunger. Can I have negative hunger? I guess not. I want to buy a bunch just to make this quicker, but... I might waste my money. <sighs> Too ordinary. I really do want to buy a bunch. Still too ordinary. You know, I don't think this is going to work, is it? He'll need at least two useful ingredients. Does that mean two separate ingredients? That is what it means, isn't it? I think what that means, I think that's the reason he wants both strange catches and a live specimen. Yeah, okay, I think how this works is that when it says this is a matter of luck, that means if you give this item to him, it may or may not count as what he wants. Right, he might say this is too ordinary or whatever and get rid of it, or he might say yes, this is, this is right. And then I think once it says this is right, that's the end of being able to use this, being able to get anything out of this. Because he needs two useful ingredients. So either that means... I think maybe he needs two separate ingredients. Maybe he needs one valid strange catch and one valid live specimen. And I've already given him a valid strange catch. One of the first that I gave him, the first or the second, I think, was what he wanted. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe he just needs two useful ingredients and either of these can count. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. I wish it was more specific. I'm gonna waste a bit of money here, but whatever. If none of these count, then I'm going to assume that what I just said was true. Oh, wait. No, never mind. Okay, yeah, so it doesn't matter what type it is, which is good. Because if I gave him live specimens, I'd be very disappointed because live specimens cost 500 echo. Whereas these are 25 each. Promise. He tastes a morsel on the tip of his knife and shudders. Um, oh, it's the same thing it said before. Are you wants to study butchery at the Chelinate. Oh. Are you sure? Okay. Does that mean I'd lose him? I hope that doesn't mean I'd lose him. If I take him to the Chelinate, does he want to stay there? Wait, what the hell is this? Oh, I think this is the reminder thing telling him, uh, telling me that he wants to go to the Chelinate. The bandaged cook has thrown a strange cash catch across the galley, and then a knife. Is something wrong? The ingredients are fine. It, it is my hands that are deficient. There are piquant jewels hiding in the vitals of these creatures, but I cannot extract them. One slip, and the taste is contaminated. He paces the galley. I need to improve my butchery. Can you take me to the Chelinate? No one knows more about gutting than the bone men. Alright, is the Chelinate near where I'm going anyway? It actually is. I'm going to be hitting up the Empire of Hands. This is freaking perfect. Yeah. I'm going to be going down to Polythreme and then down to the Empire of Hands. I'm going to be down here anyway. Might as well go to the Chelinate. 
This is turning into like a perfect run. Super, super efficient. Everything is just along the way. This is awesome. Okay. What else to do? I know I need to buy the Watchful Curio, which I believe costs one secret. Let's do that. A sinister little squatting image, but its eyes are pleading. Ew. Alright, so now I can gain an audience with the King of Clay, or whatever. Anything else I want here? <laughs> I can buy a Searing Enigma, which I do want, but it costs five extraordinary implications? <gasps> oh my god, I don't even have one. I don't even know how I get those. That ain't gonna happen. Okay, yeah, we're done here. Let's take a stop at Aceville along the way down to Polythreme so I can gather some more supplies, since I am running a bit low. Doing fine on fuel. Thankfully I bought so many fuel, so much fuel, rather, at Mount Palmerston. I feel depressed if I don't have my list of officers out. Even though it's more tactically sound to have them compressed to down so I can't see them just so I can actually see more. Oh, look at that. Yeah, even though it's tactically unsound to have them out. It just, you know, it feels like they're all they're all here, all my buddies are here, my my weird crew, my, my very weird crew. They're all here. Feels nice. Ooh, Elder Angler Grab. 600 hit points? No. If it had 400, maybe. 600, no. Port report. Supplies, please. No, I lost a crew. Eight supplies. Well worth it. Don't need to worry about supplies until I get back to London, I think. Okay, down, down to Polythreme. Wonder if we'll find any unfinished men around. I wonder what the king is going to be like in Polythreme. Alright, I'm probably... yeah, I'm not actually going to take any clay men to transport. Because they take up too much hold space and it's not worth enough. Let's get a port report. Alright, let's get an audience with the king with the hundred hearts. The clay broker, leaning on his copper staff, examines you coolly. The king will see your little friend, he says. No, he won't see you. Not just now. 
He gestures for you, for you to hand him the watchful curio. What the hell? This is the thing with sad, pleading eyes, right? Is there like a soul trapped in here? What the hell's the king gonna do with this thing? That night... That night? The hill of Polythreme quakes. The words on the walls uncurl themselves. The birth cries are everywhere heard, as clay men sit up, opening incurious eyes, awaiting their tithing to London. The clay broker waits on the quayside. On the flat palm of his broad hand, the watchful curio squats. But it is changed. Our regards to stone, is all he says. What did you do to my idol? Its eyes glitter with awareness. Its melancholy has dissipated. Now you sense anticipation. Our regards to stone. Is this meant to be used? For some sort of... Like one of the gods of the Z? What are the gods of the Z? I don't even remember. I know they're salt. What are the others, though? Is stone one of them? Hmm. So I can keep doing this. I could just keep bringing him watchful curios. What do I do with it? I mean, it's taking up hold space. I'm assuming I can't sell it at London. No, I can't. Let me check my list. Has a wakeful idol ever shown up? I don't think it's meant to be sold. I think it's meant to be used in a quest event, but I don't ever remember a quest event that involved a wakeful idol. And I've been almost, if not every single place in the entire Undersea. Almost everything's explored. So let's look up idol. Nothing? Nothing. Yeah, Wakeful Idol is not in the list. Okay. I have no freaking clue what to do with it. Which is kind of annoying because it's taking up hold space. It's only one slot, though. It's not that big of a deal. Huh. Well, it is done. Whatever it is. Set Zail for... Hmm. Any reason to go back to Godfall while I'm here? Nah. Alright, let's head down to the Empire of Hands. Here we go. An appropriately delightful welcome. The delightful adventuress leans over the rail of the ship, 
sniffing the humid air with evident distaste. What a filthy, damp little place. Oh well, we shall endure. At the sight of the mayor hobbling up, she straightens. A thin, insincere smile spreads across her face. Ah, you there, my good primitive, she calls, striding down the ramp and clasping his arm tight. Now then, I come in search of your first emperor's vault, and for that I shall be needing a few things. Some of your finest workers, and tools, and some food. Do you understand me? She shakes her head, barely waiting for a response. F-O-O-D, she repeats. Comprenus? <laughs> oh dear, I see we shall be here for a while. Listen, I hear you fellows rather like souls. Shall we discuss that like higher pr primates? Oh my god, she is massively racist. Well, payment for the journey. Barnabas stays to settle up while his mistress negotiates the value of her soul with the mayor. <laughs> is she going to sell her own soul? I think she already has. A man with no face. Barnabas removes his mask with what looks to be a silent moment of great relief. Underneath is... Nothing. Just a flat surface where his face should have been. Ah, an unfinished clay man. One of those flawed products of polythreme that follows their own rules. If only you'd known that before he boarded. Of course, that's why the adventurers never mentioned it. He silently presents you with your agreed fee, dips his head in a polite bow, and lumbers back to his mistress. It appears she has struck a deal with the mayor. So the unfinished men don't even have faces. Their faces weren't finished. Huh. It's funny, because I just went to Polythreme, too. The Delightful Adventurous will establish a base camp on the Fountainhead Island. She welcomes your assistance, as one who has proven to be not entirely useless. And 200 Echo. Thank you. Alright, so Fountainhead Island. Yeah, so she's looking for the treasure. That's one of the things I tried to get, but I wasn't able to. I needed, like, a treasure hunter or something, didn't I? And I guess she is that person. Alright, let's get a port report, I suppose. Wait, what is this? Unlocked if you don't have a rusty locket. That's weird. Hmm, I'm kind of worried if I do the port report, that's going to mess up... I don't remember how that works. Is that going to mess up my ability to go from island to island? I don't want to risk it. It's not worth it. I'm just, I just want to go to the islands. Alright, let's go visit the base camp. Where's she set up? Let's visit the Delightful Adventuress's camp. With a small army of monkeys bought with her soul, she excavates the vault of the first emperor. Okay, so she actually sold her soul. Alright. The foliage is thick and unforgiving. The delightful adventuress, helped by her faceless clay man bodyguard Barnabas, and a small group of worker monkeys hired for the price of her soul, works to excavate the vault of the first emperor. Hmm, let's see. Speak. Look at the vault. Or a gift. What is this? Hmm, the delightful adventuress has already uncovered and put aside many treasures. A small statue amongst them looks particularly interesting. Do I want to give a gift to the monkey emperor? I don't really know. Let's leave that for now. Let's just speak with her. A flustered circus mistress. Oh, it's you. Of course. Help me with these blasted maps, would you? The monkeys are quite clueless. She shakes her head. They claim our souls uplift them. But if you ask me, it's just a case of monkey see, monkey do. Can you believe they think that zeppelin of theirs will let them create a new empire? Wait, you there! 
Take that out of your mouth this very second. <laughs> if I speak with her again, does she say the same thing? Yeah, okay. Let's check out the vault of the First Emperor. A not-so-ancient edifice. It may look centuries old, but this entryway is relatively new. The monkeys can never leave alone, always adding bits on their whims, uh, as their whims demand. Ooh. This tribute to the Empire's first and greatest has been constructed over generations by monkeys working with stolen ideas of what an ancient tomb should be. Outside the vault, the delightful adventuress flits back and forth between her base camp and the vault entrance. To rush, darling, is to court tragedy. The delightful adventuress pays barely any attention to you as she prepares. She's not yet ready to open the vault. You should return later when she has had a chance to organize her monkey workers. This may take a while. Hmm. Ooh, I can take a shortcut past the delightful adventuress's camp. Maybe if I get the map before her, I can take all the treasure. That would be pretty funny. I wouldn't mind doing that because I don't really particularly like her. She is kind of an asshole. Well, let's visit her camp again. So, done that, done that. Uh, I guess get a gift for the Monkey Emperor. Sure. Nobody is watching. At least, you don't think so. It is hard to tell, with Barnabas's blank face giving nothing away. Can he see? He seems to be able to, somehow. In any event, he makes no move to raise an alarm as you take the small trinket. I'm just imagining a faceless clay man just staring blankly, or rather wondering if he's staring at you, but you can't tell. That's actually kind of terrifying. Now I've got a gift. Yeah, speaking with her again is pointless. Going there is pointless. Leave her to her work. What if I sneak past her and just go straight there? Is there any difference? Nope. I really want that ancient-ish treasure map. Alright, well, let's give the gift. Oh my god, that face. Ah! <laughs> Took me a second to actually look at it. I was looking over on the right. How do, how do I give him the gift? Port report. Zeppelin. Shore leave. Audience. I would think it'd be audience. Where is it? A gift for the Monkey Emperor. Oh wait, are you not the Monkey Emperor? You're the Monkey Mayor, aren't you? Yeah, you're the Mayor. What? Who the hell's the Monkey Emperor? Is that on one of the other islands? I think it is, maybe. Alright, let's check out the other islands. Oh yeah, that's right, Sovereign Island. They still demand a gift worthy of the Emperor to open up their court. Here we go. Yeah, I've already read that, but this I have not done. Gain access to the court. The gates are guarded by two armored monkeys that would look adorable if not for the blood on their bayonets. Humans are not welcome, without an invitation or a worthy gift for the Emperor. The Wild Wheeled Court The stench and heat as the gates open are a sucker punch to your senses. Inside, the stagnant air of the windowless wood palace hangs with sweat and tastes of hair. Everything is filthy, and every surface used. The apes as likely to swing across the roof as walk the floors. In prized oases of relative calm, the high-souled conduct themselves with the poise of high-born lords and ladies. Around them, their barely uplifted lessers scamper around exhausted, taking orders and cruelties from all who care to dispense them. In the middle are countless more, a sea of apes longing for advancement and fighting for what they have with tooth, claw, and low cunning.
My wild wield status is now 5. Monkey business quality is now 30. Nice. I'm moving up. Oh my god. You are obviously one of the high ones. I guess you are the emperor, aren't you? Emperor Crispin IV holds court in the heart of his palace. None may speak without permission, but the voice of the emperor is still the least heard of all. Summoned by the emperor. To step into his throne room is to step into another world. A polished one of cool and blessed quiet that already feels as alien as it is pleasant. An official welcome. The emperor sits on his throne, wrapped in robes of violet and wearing an ornate golden mask. He remains motionless, silent. He could be mistaken for a statue, if not for an almost imperceptible nod to grant his seneschal permission to speak in his name. She approaches, arms folded in the red-trimmed yellow robes of a court mandarin. Her expression is carefully blank. The chestnut hair on her face, powdered alablast alabaster white and decorated with exquisite detail in red and black. The rings on her finger mark her as a ten-souled ape, a status even the Admiralty can respect. She bows before you, a complicated ritual display of sweeping sleeves that somehow never breaks eye contact. Finished. She waits for your response. Ooh, I can try to return the bow. 32% chance? A courtesy instead. Still 32. Or remain still. Uh, I'm going to try my best. You are, after all, in front of an emperor. Alright, we're rolling the dice here. 32%. Come on, come on, come on. I, I mean, come on. I rolled high on a 2% chance to find Maybe's daughter's mother. I think I can do a 32%. Come on. The gods of the Z, I pray to you. Damn it, I failed. A flicker of disapproval. Did you do something wrong? It appears so. Be that as it may, there is business to discuss. Alright, well, they didn't murder me. The Great Exodus. The exquisite Seneschal requests your assistance to supply the Empire of Han's great work. A zeppelin that will take them to a new home far away from here. Materials for the journey. You point out that the Admiralty has the Empire of Hands both under embargo and quarantined. The only thing worse to be caught doing here than supplying them would be helping them escape their confinement. Have your people not already caused us enough pain? She demands. We starve, and you would prevent us being fed. We thirst to explore, and you cage us like animals. Why? For what purpose? What threats are we to you, who happily dine with devils? She shakes her head, almost with pity. What could you possibly see in us that shames you so? I like that she said, what threats are we to you who happily dine with devils? I like that she said that because I have literally dined with devils before. <laughs> that is something I've literally done. Or at least a deviless, who is a devil, so yeah, she counts. Wow, okay. I mean, I'm not against helping them move, really. They've obviously been pretty screwed over by the Admiralty. But what happens if I mess with the Admiralty? Are they going to know that I accepted the commission? I don't see how they could. The thing is, I have so much Admiralty's favor, and I really don't want to give that up, because if I, you know, if I piss off the Admiralty, there's no way I'm going to be able to cash in on their favor to, say, avoid the uh, whatever the people are called that search my hold. That's mostly what I want the favor for. I want it to make those people go away so I can, you know, illegally trade in red honey. I don't want to mess up my favor with the Admiralty. I don't think they'll know, though. I'll accept it. The exquisite Seneschal bows again deeper, with a pair of servants to row the boat. 
she takes you to the Zeppelin site in Port Stanton. It was originally the project of a traveler from afar hoping to travel east, who encountered an accident. In his plans and engine, however, the monkeys saw their opportunity. I don't think it was an accident. The Great Exodus will require supplies and fuel, of course, explains the exquisite Seneschal. We also seek souls to uplift our brethren that may join the work. You will, of course, be reasonably compensated for your expenses and rewarded upon completion. She also hints that there may be faster ways to complete the Zeppelin. To say more, though, would require a level of trust that you have not yet earned. Hmm. Okay. Supplies and fuel. And souls. The Zeppelin needs a hundred fuel, a hundred supplies, and a hundred souls. Okay, that's never gonna happen. This is a long-term project. <laughs> wow. Oh, it even explicitly says, working with the delightful adventurous will unlock a way to gather enough souls to complete the Zeppelin. Okay, yeah, let's not do this the slow way. The exquisite Seneschal may have a distasteful way of acquiring many of the supplies required for free. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so all of these have special ways to complete them. A respective visitor to the Wildwood Court can arrange a more efficient supply of fuel from elsewhere. Interesting. So now I can always go back to the Zeppelin, right? Yep. Good to know. Can always go back to the Wild Wild Court. What happens if I go back? Anything new I can do? Oh yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. Visitor in the Court, Silent Gallery. Hmm. Let's talk to the Visitor in Court. A float bearing a giant bat creature costume, crudely crafted from paper mache, is wheeled through the halls. A tiny revenge. Rocks fly and sticks strike at the unfortunate servant monkey in the bat suit. Its shrieks of pain soon drowned out by the hate of the mob. Would it be worth pointing out that the masters of the bazaar are not the masters of London? No, definitely not. For a moment, they have a focus for their rage at being trapped and mocked from abroad. One of them even produces a can of fuel, lighting both the bat and a good part of the roof ablaze. The show ends as the fires are extinguished. The beaten, singed monkey from inside the costume is dragged away amidst a cacophony of jeering laughter. What the fuck? How... what did that even do? What was the point of that? Can I do it again? This is different. A mob of monkeys. Just getting around is almost impossible. Three high-souled monkeys fight over which has the most stylish wig. <laughs> a stampede breaks out when a merchant stall collapses, and all descend to take advantage. Two mandarins come to blows over a particularly valuable soul. The screeching chaos is unbearable. You retreat to a quiet corner, or at least as quiet as you can find. Okay. The Silent Gallery? Whatever this is. You're granted permission to enter. The silence is as pleasant a slap to the face. Is a... Oh, is a pleasant slap to the face. Sweetly scented with incense. Inside, the exquisite Seneschal moves between clusters of mandarins in their yellow and red robes. Using her experience to not so much give orders as offer advice on what the um Emperor would wish. Oh, that's back here. Oh, this is for the plan. I need status 35. And, oh, my archaeology also needs to be higher. Okay. 
Also, trade agreement thing. Ooh. So if I'm trusted enough, I can establish a trade agreement with the Iron Republic. Oh, cool. That would make sense. Yes. Okay, cool. You can really get up to some stuff here. Alright, I've done that. I've done that. Um, trade is just generic give them stuff, right? Oh, this is just to raise my status. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? A pot of violent ink. This would be for the curator at Venderbite. Hmm. It is so hard to come by, muses the uh, Mandarin, idly fondling a pot of rare violent ink. A pity. The exquisite seneschal is known to have uses for it. Whoa, you can do a lot of stuff here. So I think I can get this if I give them a firkin of red honey, which really is not very far away from here, actually. Prisoner's honey. Wine. Okay, hold on. I want to write some of this stuff down so that I know what I need to bring here. So yeah, I'm going to write some notes down and I'll be right back. There we go. Got it all written down. Sorry, no gifts today. Alright, done that, done that, done that. The Chandler of Souls. Mm, trust is not a courtly virtue. The Chandler will, however, be pleased to act as your intermediary to ensure fair play on both sides of the transaction. Wait, what is this? High sold apes prize quality over quantity, seeking beneficial spiritual alchemy. The Chandler lacks the finesse of devils, but he assures you this is not a problem. Your soul is his concern. Your comfort is not. Oh, wait, so selling your soul is like a time-limited thing? Sell it to the mayor of Port Stanton. With it, he will have the five souls needed to petition for membership of the court. Sell to the ambitious page. She will likely not keep it for longer than it takes to trade up, for now, though, it serves her purpose. What, she's gonna give the souls back or something? This is weird. Oh my god. The Veiled Concubine. A <laughs> gift for the Emperor. This trade is a gamble, based on the Emperor's mood. I don't want to do any of these. No thanks. Alright, done that, done that, done that. Okay. This place is so weird and there's so many freaking things to do. Okay, I've been to the court. Um, let's go to the other islands. Yeah, let's go to Heartsake Village. See if anything new happens there. Oh god, what the fuck is this? It was not madness that drove these pirates to cannibalism, but years of being shipwrecked without the comfort of meat. After a while, any meat would do. That's right, I remember these people. What's This is different, though. These options are more dangerous looking. Uh, the lost treasure hunter. He joined the pirates to see the Z. Now he just hopes to one day see something he recognizes. How come this is unlocked with menaces, wounds no more than two? Why is that a th That scares me. Why is that even a thing? Why are, why are wounds involved here? Is that implying that I am going to get wounded? Hmm. Well, if I could get the treasure hunter, then I could perhaps kind of screw over the delightful adventurous. Let's do that. Ahoy! How goes your search? He asks. Find anything? It is a voice that so badly wants the answer to be no. Trade supplies for Foxfire Candles. No thanks. Trade recent news for dynamite. What? Okay. 
I don't know what I'm going to do with the dynamite. I'm assuming I can use it for the vault somehow. That, that seems like a pretty good trade for me. Dynamite for news? Sure. Trade a live specimen for a flare. That is such a bad deal. A live specimen's worth 500 echo. A flare is worth like 20 or 30. Ooh, I could persuade him to give me the map. A searing enigma. And I need tons of archaeology. Alright, let's get some dynamite, I guess. You have a newspaper. At least I won't feel entirely lost when I finally get back home. Yeah, you can check your stock prices. Yay, three sticks of dynamite! The lost treasure hunter scans the latest headlines. Fascinating, he mutters. And should be most absorbent, if needs must. <laughs> okay. Guess it's better than the poison oak or whatever the hell grows around here. Alright, goodbye. Thankfully, the dynamite is a curiosity. <laughs> a tool for pragmatic archaeologists. I bet. The storyline on this pl in, the, in the Empire of Hands is just massive. There's so many things to do. Okay, been there. Been there. I think Fountainhead is... That's the place where the Delightful Adventurous is, right? Wasn't that the place? I think so. Before going back there, let's check out Ash Ishmith. Ish Ishthmis. Ah, we can visit the monkey foundling's hut once again. She does not seem to be here right now. A pair of Pentecost apes are, though, glaring at you with equal parts malice and their usual avarice. Hmm. Alright, let's talk with them. Oh, chased away. The two Pentecost apes attack, snarling and hissing. Their raw ferocity forces a retreat, though they do not follow and press the advantage. Once you are through the trees, the chase ends. Peering through the foliage, you see them quietly return to their strange vigil. Huh. Weird. Alright, back to Fountainhead Island. Yes, yeah, so this is this place. So let me see if I can do something here now that I have the dynamite. Like, perhaps I can offer it to her. Speak with her. Mm, nope, that's the same. Oh, here we go. Here's something new. Yeah, this is new. Outside the vault. The delightful adventuress consults papers while her clay man Barnabas and a small crew of variably hard-working monkeys try to force open the doors. Ah, you. You're here, she calls. Do pick up a crowbar. There's a deer. A bit of elbow grease should do it. Right. On the count of three. Muscles, human and primate alike, strain as the delightful adventuress harries everyone along. Finally, with a crack and a screech of triumph and exhaustion, the door slide open. Inside is just blackness. There. Now, chop-chop, everybody, declares the delightful adventuress, striding into the dark with a personal glim lantern. Behind her, her monkeys collapse to the ground gasping, occasional stolen words and squeals of protest escaping into the air. Ooh. We are inside. I feel like I'm going to need candles. <laughs> what do you know? You need candles. Which you can trade for using supplies at the other island. And I do have some supplies, actually. Hmm. The delightful adventurous will not relinquish her glim lantern. You will need foxfire candles to light your way. One crate will suffice for the entire exploration. Ah. I love the fact that it's specifically telling me these things. And I'm not being sarcastic. I mean, that's actually really nice. Because otherwise I would have thought, like, you know, is this like the other places where I need to bring ten candles and, you know, you might use up a lot of them or all of them? But no. Looks like just one group of Foxfire candles should be fine. Okay, so let's go back to the other place and go get some. Gotta get me some. It's here, right? Yeah. Let's talk to you. How many supplies do you want? One? Oh, just one supply? That's fine. He breathes with relief. 
Thank you. His nibs can talk your ears off about leaving things on your plate. Not least other people's ears. Wait, what? His nibs. His nibs. His, what? His nib. What? You know that feeling when you read a sentence again and again and it just doesn't resolve into any meaning whatsoever? This is one of those cases. This is the pirate speaking. Thank you. His nibs can talk your ears off about leaving things on your plate. Who the fuck is nibs? I don't get it. Okay, here we go. The antechamber. At the bottom of the stairs is a room with a sealed stone door. In front of that stands a pointedly placed plinth holding three thin pillars and some stone discs. The delightful adventuress rolls her eyes. A trial of the mind, it appears. How very adorable. It appears that our monkey friend's ancestors have absorbed more than a few souls with a passion for things of the pulp. Oh well, that should make things interesting. She slaps your shoulder. Do the honors, Capitano. This has gone full Indiana Jones. Ah, there's a 100% chance of success. Solve the puzzle. Three poles, stone discs. Oh, please. The Towers of Hanoi puzzle. That little children's game that has been amusing London in recent years. This antechamber must be a more recent addition to the vault than it looks. If even the monkeys have brought into its legend... Or have bought into its legend. You roll up your sleeves. This will be easy enough. Fifteen stone discs. Ah, a minor problem suddenly reveals itself. Well, I see that you have this under control, declares the delightful adventuress, heading back upstairs. I have I leave it in your evidently very capable hands. Uh, wait, what? Your Empire of Hands, Tower of Hanoi, moves remaining quality is now... 32,767. Is that a joke that I don't understand? That's gotta be a joke. I, I think it's a joke. Unlocked with Empire Fans, Towers of Hanoi moves remaining 2. You have 32... What? Wait, this is unlocked when my moves remaining is 2, but it's not 2, it's 32,000. What? I think it's... I'm pretty sure it's a joke. I don't know what's up with that, but yeah, I think it's like... I think the joke is that it takes forever to fucking solve it or something. They cannot be serious about this, surely. Alright. <laughs> I've lost one. That's 32,766. If you keep this up, you should be done just in time to see the sixth city. And then, of course, I think this is the hint. You and the Delight of Adventurous are not the only treasure hunters in the Empire of Hands. Another may have supplies that you both lack. Nah, just keep doing it. I wonder what would happen if you actually kept doing this until you got it down to, like, two or one. Ah, just blow the fucking thing. Boom! Bits of rubble and clockwork fly. The stonework trembles slightly as if about to collapse, but then settles with just the occasional plink-plink of metal and the tinkle of falling shards and gears of all sizes. Well, that is certainly one solution, declares the delightful adventuress, unplugging her ears. I think, though, darling, I shall be taking the rest of those. Cannot fault your thinking, but we would rather reach the center of this quaint little tomb without ourselves becoming buried in it, would we not? Still, splendid resourcefulness. Splendid! Top marks! Let's press on into the vault. Oh, this episode is so going to be over an hour long. Holy crap. I love the Empire of Hands. This is probably my favorite place in the entire game, I think. 